Hi, I'm Garvin DeShazer. Courage, commitment, leadership. These are words we hear every day, but what do they really mean? Today, we're going to find out as we look at the life of a man who didn't just live these words, but actually gave them new meaning. This is a story I know you'll enjoy because this is your daily inspiration. It had been a frustrating night. The squadron of PT boats had been sent to intercept four Japanese destroyers moving through the Solomon Islands on that moonless night in August 1943. Although 24 torpedoes had been fired, the darkness of the night and the strength of the Japanese defenses prevented the patrol boats from inflicting any real damage. At around 2 a.m., the young lieutenant commanding one of the PT boats spotted a destroyer and was turning to attack it when he was suddenly thrown to the deck with a crushing force. Another destroyer, sliding silently through the water, had rammed the PT boat as it set up for its attack, slicing the much smaller boat in half. Two members of his crew were killed by the impact, but as pieces of his boat slipped beneath the surface, the lieutenant gathered the surviving ten members of his crew in the water and took a vote on whether to fight or surrender. There's nothing in the book about a situation like this, he told them. A lot of you men have families. What do you want to do? I have nothing to lose. While it was true that he was unmarried, nothing to lose was not completely accurate. He came from a large family and was much loved by his parents, brothers, and sisters. And he'd been born into a family of great wealth and power. In fact, he could have easily set out the war in a desk job stateside, either by allowing his father to pull in political favors or by simply letting stand the medical disqualification he'd received when he first tried to enlist in the army, only to find that the chronic low back problems for which he'd been hospitalized many times in his childhood prevented his acceptance. But that wasn't Jack. Instead, he'd spent months exercising to straighten his back, then got his father to pull strings to get him into the Navy. After completing officer training, he volunteered for PT boat service. Now, looking into the frightened faces of his men, he knew he could only lead them by giving them this choice. Shunning surrender, the men began swimming towards an island three and a half miles away. Though he had re-injured his back in the collision, Jack towed a badly burned crewman through the water to the island with the strap of a life jacket clenched between his teeth. The next night, he swam two miles to a passage where he hoped to find an American PT boat to rescue his men. Unsuccessful, he returned to find his men suffering the effects of thirst, hunger, and exposure in addition to their injuries. Finding a damaged canoe while searching for food, he attempted the trip again the next night. Finally, after three days, he led his injured and hungry crew on a nearly four-mile swim to a larger island they could see from the tiny desolate place they'd been holed up. They swam against a strong current, and again, Jack towed the burned sailor by his life vest. When they finally arrived, they found ripe coconuts, which gave them badly needed nourishment, but still no fresh water. On the following day, Jack swam half a mile to another island where he found packages of crackers and candy, a 50-gallon drum of drinkable water, and a small canoe left by the Japanese. He loaded the canoe with these treasures and paddled them back to his men, who were able to survive until they were spotted by coast watchers and rescued a few days later. After only a month of recovery, Jack returned to duty as a commander of another PT boat. In early November, his boat took part in the rescue of nearly 50 Marines who were pinned down at the base of a river on one of the islands. Jack put his boat between the Marines and the Japanese shore batteries, acting as a shield and taking heavy fire to protect them as two small landing craft raced repeatedly into the mouth of the river, evacuating as many Marines as they could carry in each trip, 
until all were safe. Not long after, on doctor's orders, Jack was sent first to a local hospital, then back to the United States, where he remained hospitalized for several months, receiving treatment for his back injury. In March 1945, Jack retired from the Navy Reserve on physical disability. But Jack's story didn't end there. The courage, commitment, and leadership he demonstrated in the South Pacific didn't just earn him a bunch of medals. They won him the respect of all who knew him. They also gave special credibility to his words when, 16 years later, Jack, who by then was generally known by his full name, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, stood on the steps of the U.S. Capitol and in his inauguration address challenged every American to ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. How can you apply the principles of courage, commitment, and leadership in your life? These are principles available to all of us every day. You know, let's hope that you're not called upon to literally save the lives of your coworkers, as Jack was, but doesn't every simple act of kindness carry within it the message that you matter to me? Doesn't it demonstrate commitment every time you go the extra mile for someone? How will you lead by example today? Are you willing to declare, I am a courageous, committed leader? Thanks for listening. May your day be filled with love, laughter, and joy. Bye for now. Hi, this is Scott, producer for the Daily Inspirations podcast. We hope you're enjoying these stories, and if you'd like more inspiration in your life, visit MyDailyIAm.com. You can find weekend blog posts, sign up for our email update list, and you can let us know about an inspirational story you'd like us to cover. Or just say hi. We'd love to hear from you.